Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to the podcast presented by the Daily Pal. Pranuti, Amit and Purva and we're from the dailypow.com a Mumbai specific food and culture website and this is our weekly podcast the podcast now this is an episode of Bombay binge in which we talk about food in the city and um on this installment we're going to be discussing summer beverages so stay tuned for Bombay binge Bombay binge On today's episode which is an installment of Bombay Binge we're going to be talking about summer beverages and now uh, we're talking about a range of them and particularly trendy new summer beverages yes. things that hipsters like <laughs> <laughs> That includes and, us by the way and by we the way we are not hipsters because you may be a hipster boy <laughs> you just drank kombucha more on that later I did not but because I'm but sort you of want to lactose intolerant and I have stopped drinking caffeine i will have very little to participate in this <laughs> discussion this, that's a disclaimer okay <laughs> because, but uh, because all of these are well basically we're going to talk about kombucha cold brew coffee and kefir kefir <laughs> kefir milk <laughs> kefir milk as as well as milkshake good old and fashioned good old milkshake, fashioned milkshake which was drink. the one thing that i actually so you're very uh, strangely past like you said selectively conveniently lactose intolerant and the intolerant. reason we're talking about all these things is that uh, they're yeah. recently so in the market in bombay basically um i mean the idea actually came to us because kevinters and uh, makers of milkshakes there are two milkshake their shake shops and uh, their chains one uh, kevinters is from delhi as many of you may know and makers of milkshakes is from hyderabad so we recently reviewed that and in addition to that we've also like pranthi mentioned there are some hip new beverages like um that are now available in the city but let's and just start I have to with say that the they're all available in bandra <laughs> being hipster central if you think about it because both makers of milkshakes and we uh, can't help that we're trend setters okay and kventers <laughs> is in bandra but they well kventers is technically in khar technically yeah, khar which is. is in that kato road strip i mean that's uh, that's the point of argument we never know whether that, that's bandra or khar but um kventers is um Let's start with Kevinters actually it's quite popular so people who um shuttle between Delhi and Bombay must be familiar with the brand mm-hmm. it used to be very popular as in uh 1960s 1970s uh it used to be like a dairy shop um much like we have our amul stores with the amul lassi and all of that and uh so yeah kevinters was really popular in the 60s and 70s after which uh the business dwindled quite a bit and uh, the brand has been recently revived so 2015 is when the revamped avatar of kevinters uh it opened um in that a select city walk and now it's all across delhi and um you know the most sort of iconic thing about kevinters is like they serve their milkshakes in those um these glass bottles with the black cap so that's something that is it's synonymous with and uh, their drinks are nice i mean they're like you know it's like drinking molten ice cream and old school ice cream like i i would say they're more you know the lassi thickness than actual milkshakes than like compared to what people are doing with milkshakes right now cuz now we're like seeing stuff like freak shakes which are like milkshakes that are overloaded so you can put in throw in a dessert you can throw in all sorts of gourmet ingredients and call it a freak shake like the more ott it is that's what makes a freak shake and um so yeah they're quite an expensive uh, the shops just off Carter Road next to the Cafe Coffee Day outlet it's quite popular because people like i said do know the brand it's a smooth drink um Yeah so that's yeah, I, mean, I remember I mean I I went there when I was when I was in college in Delhi mm-hmm. and this was <laughs> in the late 90s the <laughs> early 90s and it was one place that you had to go to if you were from out of town right. so I went to the Connaught place uh, Cavendish which was the main Cavendish yeah um you know can't say I was crazy about it yeah. but it was one thing that had to be done you know like a lot of Delhi wallas still say that the new Cavendish doesn't taste anything like the old Cavendish so there's this whole thing that oh my god we hate yeah, Cavendish now I think it's just now. nostalgia <laughs> you know so I think it's just like the the young lot or people from out of town who will still say flock to a Cavendish um the other brand makers of 
the milkshakes is a relatively new Hyderabad brand and um, they opened here last month and uh, they've been serving um, so basically they blend chocolates and cookies into their shakes and then they top it up with cream so they're really rich uh, far richer than what Kevin Tur sells and um, I've had the bounty which I really like so you can choose like they have um, lots of chocolates they have galaxy bounty Kit Kat they have hide and seek also <laughs> yeah so they have like a premium range and then there's the the Indian biscuits you get what? bourbon hide and seek how uh, sort <laughs> yeah. of uh, discrimination discriminatory yeah but does are these closer to sort of freak shakes because what you said it seems that Kevinters is more like the I traditional Kev- kind of I think what Kevinters has done is it's sort of yeah I would say like Kevinters now sort of stands out from I know I'm more familiar with this breed of milkshakes which is like loaded yeah. you know uh, but yeah I wouldn't call them freak shakes but they're definitely more indulgent than Kevinters shakes and um, freak shakes if, if you've been to Doe and Lower Perel um, in Kamla Mills or if you've been to Three Chicks and a Bear both actually are in Lower Perel um, there's like you know a no number of ingredients in there it's not just your milk cream ice yeah, cream like combo like you'll find a lemon tart at the bottom of the freak oh, yeah wow. so with the like crust that. and okay. um, or dough sells one which has bacon and salted caramel and you know different things so it's quite bizarre but I think that's why it's called a freak shake mm-hmm. and it actually works I mean I'm not complaining mm-hmm. if, you're, if you've got okay. uh, that kind yeah. of taste it's good so anyway coming back to makers uh, you can choose your chocolate and that sort of decides your experience they have a section called healthy shakes where they mix in conflicts with the ice cream cream and milk and uh, they're not healthy by any stretch but the strawberry one is actually quite nice yeah and makers is not badly priced either you pay 160 an average of 150 to 160 Uh, coming to the other the other beverages there's uh, kombucha which is my favorite um i tried it at the farmers market which takes place in bandra this is kavita mukhi's farmers market which takes place every sunday and there's a stall there uh, they call the brand bombucha now it's a couple that's making this in uh, they make it in varsova where they live and uh, they're called uh, monica pavlovska and nitin gandhi and um Well first explain what kombucha is exactly. Okay, yeah, kombucha. Right, so it's a it's a fermented tea drink. Uh basically you take tea, you add raw sugar to it and then you or any not not necessarily raw sugar, this couple adds raw sugar to it, but um and then you there's a, there's a bacteria called scoby and the bacteria eats up that sugar and converts the tea into this sour fizzy drink so the base is simply tea and sugar scoby stands for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast right thanks amit <laughs> for <laughs> all of you who uh, plan to brew your own uh, kombucha yeah, after and, listening to this podcast yeah and a lot of people are getting their scoby from uh, goa you get it in bali it's like a uh, Uh, basically all hipster places yeah, hipster yogis yeah, you know there at the beach and you can go and yeah you know, basically be hipstery so you pran you also tried kombucha right you had it at the banja farmers market i had it at the market. farmers market and i quite liked it too and i'm mm-hmm. not a huge fan of sweet drinks mm-hmm. but i had the original flavor i mean they sell a whole a number of flavors there's apple spiced there's some there's a chamomile and date flavor yeah. right uh so the original and chamomile and date are my favorite now why the chamomile one tastes sweeter than the original is because they're sweetening it further with dates right otherwise if you just have the original flavor um that's pretty tart you know and right. i i really like that and um And so, it's supposed to have I mean this is how they sell it to you that it's supposed to have a lot of health benefits. Right so it's probiotic so yeah, stuff that's I mean, good for your gut. I, I'm sure yeah. I'm sure it is good for you right. and all of that but you know it really from the way people talk about kombucha it sounds like a cure all like it's great for your skin it's great for your hair yeah, it, which you know, also, cures everything it's eczema also, yeah, cancer <laughs> whatever. Really? They okay, don't no, have nice bottles they don't though. Say that. I mean for the picture that we've sort of They do have website. nice bottles and they take the bottle back okay. which is great so you can finish your bottle of kombucha and then oh, go and yeah. I've just been using them at home for water. <laughs> well you can but you like can them, also give them the back glass bottles. And yeah. This is what I found out um because I returned my bottle. Right. Uh if you return six bottles you get one free. 
Okay, Ooh. a bottle of kombucha. Free. That's nice. That's yeah. fantastic. I'm so gonna return. And this home. is at Bandra Farmers Market, which is at De Monte Park every Sunday. Right? Every Sunday, nine to two, and they sell out pretty quickly. So I'd mm. recommend getting there early. A lot of models uh, <laughs> model. for this. I've seen it because I've been standing behind them. But you, you said that they were slightly well, different frankly, demographic. You know, I didn't see any models. In fact. I've so I've been twice to this farmers market and the first time it was just full of aunties which was kind of reassuring for me you know because I didn't really want to see any I've extras. seen a lot of models <laughs> but you know I I I bumped into a friend over there and she said you know the kind of people that you see here are the kind of people you thought were cool in the 90s when you were new in Bombay and she meant like this old MTV and Channel V crowd and i looked around and she was right you know i saw some these old vj types whose yeah. names i've forgotten and samira true. reddy she's there every sunday um there's also another person brewing kombucha in the city um it's harsh nigandi uh he is brewing it in like they're right now they're delivering in town he calls his service Bucha bar or buka bar I don't know how he intends to pronounce it but um again it's pre-order even with bombucha which is at the farmers market you can call an order or through their facebook page similarly with nigandhi you have to place an order so the uh, bucha bar charges 150 for 250 ml uh while bombucha which is at the farmers market they charge 200 bucks for 500 ml Um moving on to kefir again a fermented drink this time it's um uh, you know Amit I think you're going to hate this one cuz it's like you know a halfway point between buttermilk and yogurt both things that I do not like yeah, <laughs> yeah and um it's pretty sort of tart and uh, you know in case of the original anyway I'll come to the flavors but um Moina Oberoi who is a food consultant and a food writer she has introduced kefir in Bombay and um she calls her brand Moz Kefir and uh, you know it's available for order on Scootsy and you can also they have their website which you can order directly from I and actually really there's also at a bunch of restaurants it's at Kala Ghoda Cafe are they selling it individually they because are. I yeah. know that 212 All Good uses it in other things no i've seen it on the counter as well as um Bombay Salad Company in okay. Bandra. Okay. And she did say that they were going to be selling at Nature's Basket in Food Hall uh at the time that I was writing the piece on it. And um again I I like kefir a lot because I'm a massive lassi fan and I also love yogurt in general. Um now most kefir offers like multiple flavors. There's original, there's vanilla, honey vanilla, there's a mango flavor. And how is it different from lassi? Um again there's a bacteria at play here like a specific one that makes kefir and what it does is that this bacteria so the milk is the base but this bacteria sort of feeds on the milk so by the time kefir is ready it's 99% dairy free um so that's something that oh, was yeah that's interesting but it still has this sort of very uh I mean buttermilk yogurt. It has a yeah, taste. it has a very yogurty flavor mm-hmm. uh so to say and uh it's probiotic so again it's meant to be good for your gut. Now Moina started drinking it because she had oh. you know she had some allergies and she found that with consistent use of kefir it sort of cleared up. Um so it's like a testimonial of sorts and that's how she got into it. Um and I'm not using any of these drinks as to cure anything, to cure myself of anything, but these are drinks that I would there are nicer alternatives to say i don't want to have a sugar loaded milkshake every week nor am i a big supporter of cold pressed juices i mean this is a personal choice and i'd rather eat my fruit so i, I just find these like nicer alternatives to milkshakes or cold pressed juices or or colas which i've never been into um and in terms of most flavors i really like the the mango one it tastes just like mango lassi but it's fizzier and it's again very tart um and she has a vanilla honey one which is really sweet this it's on the sweeter side the original one is it takes a bit of getting used to because it's quite like it's so tart that it's almost sharp so with most the price
prices start at rupees 400 for three 200 ml bottles and uh, you can either get uh, three original flavors or an assortment like i said they're available for purchase online you have to order it just a day before and um, i think with both uh, kombucha and with kefir like when i spoke to the people who've sort of launched these brands they said that your it might take a bit of getting used to uh, these beverages because of the fermentation so there are specific times for example when they would recommend having kombucha and kefir but it's just a matter of sort of setting your own patterns with these drinks and um then lastly the the beverage that's also sort of uh picking up at cafes across the city is cold brews and pran you've since you're the coffee expert within the team you should tell us you've had a couple recently right yeah well there are I mean, I'm not entirely sure how many people are doing cold brews, but I mean, I think about three of them are. Mm-hmm. So one is uh, Koinonia Coffee Roasters in Bandra. They have a little coffee shop and a roastery in Chuim Village. So they do a cold brew, which is which I quite like actually. So now let me just explain what cold brewing is. Essentially, you brew coffee powder with room temperature water, and you leave it overnight. And what okay. that does is that. Um, you get a very intense coffee concentrate okay but it sort of takes the edge off so when you pour hot water into coffee to mm. get a hot cup of coffee all the essential oils are immediately released and um that makes the coffee acidic mm. but here it's a more gradual process so the coffee is less acidic but it's also more flavorful which is why a lot of cold brews taste chocolatey almost okay. you know, but are they intense. less strong then in that they're sense. not less strong they're pretty strong okay. but they don't have that acidic edge okay. a lot of them mm-hmm. so, and so they're very different from cold coffee <laughs> yeah very yeah. different from cold coffee so in cold coffee the concentrate that's used is probably made it's probably an espresso mm-hmm. or made using the normal hot coffee yeah. methods and if you put milk in it well this is obviously supposed to be drunk it's supposed to be drunk uh, you can Black. either have it on ice so okay. a lot of people have cold brewed coffees on ice mm-hmm. I'm not crazy about that, so I have it room temperature. Mm-hmm. Or um, it's so a bit cold brew coffee doesn't necessarily mean that it's cold. It can no, be room temperature. It as well. can be room temperature. And you can have it with milk and without like regular coffee. Yeah, you can. Okay, you can. It's but just how it's prepared. Essentially, it's just how it's prepared. Okay. But, I but mean, then you, I mean, if you have it with milk, then would you heat it? Because that's just weird, right? Then so, so this is what's slightly confusing yeah. about cold brewed coffee. If you want a hot cup of cold brewed coffee, yeah. what do you do? Yeah. So there are a few things that you can do. One is you can heat it, mm-hmm. but I think it would lose a bit of its flavor mm-hmm. if you heat it in a microwave. Yeah. The other thing people do is that they heat the mug. Okay. You know? So you have a hot mug and you yeah. pour the cold brewed coffee in it. So some mm-hmm. of that heat passes into yeah. the cold brewed coffee, mm-hmm. but it's now it, it won't be a piping hot mug of coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I think is a nice way to have it. Yeah. I mean, I prefer it slightly warm, actually. So I've tried two out of these three. So there's Koinonia Coffee Roasters. There's uh, Blue Tokai. Uh, they do a cold brew there in Mahalakshmi. And there's a company called Brew X Makina. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do a cold brewed coffee as well. And these guys supply cold brewed coffee to the daily bar and kitchen, which is in Bandra and. You know, they those guys make coffee cocktails out of this cold brew, but I'm I'm yet to try the brew itself. So Koinonia Coffee sells uh, its cold brew in a bottle, mm-hmm. and it's available at their roastery in Chuim Village. It's also available at um, La Folie on Hill Road in Bandra. Yeah. And, and you can t- have it straight from the bottle? You can have it straight from the bottle. Okay. And so they chill the bottle a bit. Right. Uh, but I, I really liked it because, uh, again, I thought it was a really intense flavor. Mm-hmm. But minus that acidic yeah. edge that hot coffee has, but it's also it's quite strong. Right. Uh, yeah. But it was quite pleasing, mm-hmm. and uh, I also tried Blue Tokai's cold brew. So now, what they do is they use a blend of three coffees. Mm-hmm. Two coffees are from uh, this estate called the Atikan Estate. Uh, they sell coffees from the Atikan Estate, and one is called um, Ganguri. That's the estate. These are all estates down south. And so they use a blend of these three coffees, and um, I found this coffee to be too strong. Okay. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I felt that it was it was just too strong for a cold brewed coffee, and I I wasn't crazy about it. Mm-hmm. So of the two, I I definitely feel Koinonia's was a more balanced, yeah. uh, balanced. You know, flavor. you said that uh, you said that Daily is making cocktails out of it. That's interesting because uh, kombucha is actually a very popular 
cocktail base as well. So right. if you go to Farmer and Sons, they always advertise this kombucha cocktail. Now, I don't know if they're brewing theirs in-house. Um, at the time I went, they didn't have it. But it is popular for kombucha to serve, to be in a cocktail. So right. that's something that maybe we could expect to see as well. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But you know, what's interesting about all these beverages that we talked about, apart from, say, the milkshakes, mm-hmm. uh, that they're right now they're pretty much in the hipster domain. So I don't know what quantities that they're being made to order their limited quantities I wonder whether they'll catch on to become sort of mass market uh, you know uh, products like for instance the cold brew I suppose because they're making these guys already make coffee and it's just one of the many ways that they serve it yeah. so I suppose that's not so much the case with those but with like kombucha and with you know kefir, kefir. milk yeah. I mean I think that you will well it depends on like more players right so kefir yeah. so far only Moina is making mm. it but with kombucha there are only two players in fact um, Abhishek Chinchalkar who is setting up a brewery mm. he is a beer expert and yeah. a brewer he works works with Woodside and as a consultant and um, uh, so when he's not making beers he's experimenting with kombucha at home that was my first experience with kombucha because he actually got it home for me to try Mm -hmm. and I had no no exposure to kombucha at that okay. time so it's that simple to make you can make kombucha yeah. in your home mm-hmm. kefir I think is a little bit more scientific yeah. or arduous but kombucha is actually that simple to make because essentially you're using tea and sugar yeah. as I said I mean even cold brew you can just make it at home really I mean right. all you need is coffee which you know if you're a coffee drinker yeah. you'll have coffee yeah. and you just steep it in water for 24 hours and there's your cold yeah. brew That's yeah it. but you can make juice at home also so, so, yeah. Yeah. You can make <laughs> there are, there are tons of kombucha recipes online as well I mean I'm pretty going to look for SCOBY for sure <laughs> SCOBY do <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for this episode and if you want to know more we've written about all these beverages on the dailypower.com so look up our posts and uh, we'll see you next week for more on what's happening in the city read the dailypower.com also subscribe to our newsletter on the website follow us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram we're the Daily Pow. And you can find this podcast on the Indus Vox Media SoundCloud page, as well as iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn. The podcast is an IVM production, and if you like our show, you should check out My Neighbor Zuckerberg. Every week, entrepreneurs Munaf Kapadia and Nabil Merchant sit down to talk shop with other entrepreneurs about their stories of struggle and success. Happy listening! Excuse me, bhaiya. Excuse me. Bolly, madam. Menu me kya hai? Menu me scene and scene hai. Podcast hai, on course hai, Cyrus hai, hai, Made in India, Rediscovery Project, Empowering Series, Sex Vex hai, IBM Likes hai, Simplified hai, Keeping It Queer hai, Things and Destinations hai, My Neighbor Zuckerberg hai, or The Fan Garage hai. Aapko kya chahiye hai? Uh, ek baar repeat kar denge kya? Repeat, repeat nahi karta hum. Aap jao, ivmpodcast.com pe aur suno ye sab. Ya fir download karo unka app. Sab aapke ungliyo pe.